Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson for Catholic News Break. Here's what's happening this week in the news. We begin with news from around the world. With the Pope's upcoming trip to Cuba, many experts are looking at how the visit may affect the relationship between the Cuban government and the Catholic Church. Emily Thompson of Catholic News Service looks at the challenges facing Cuban society as well as the church in Cuba. When Pope Benedict XVI visits Cuba next week, he'll arrive in a communist nation where the Catholic Church has become more public. But Cuban society still faces various challenges. Many Cubans have expressed hope that the Pope's visit will spark a wave of religious interest, Catholic evangelization, and more cooperation between the church and government. In that sense, the papal visit will be able to open a path between Cuba and the world, a path with the Cubans among themselves, to better relations between the church and the state so that the church can better serve that society. Since Pope John Paul II's 1998 visit to the Caribbean nation, the church is more unified, more public, and more likely to work with the government in accomplishing specific goals, including helping Cubans in need. However, Cuba's bishops, priests, and lay people are still wary of pushing official tolerance too far. While Cubans now have reasons to be optimistic, the picture isn't uniformly rosy. Everyday life is a struggle for most of Cuba's citizens. Salaries are low, food is expensive, and in short supply. The church estimates that as many as 70% of Cubans are Catholic, but attendance at weekly mass remains low, and while most children are baptized, far fewer receive other sacraments. For Catholic News Service, this is Emily Thompson. Looking at news now from the Vatican, on March 26th, the Pontifical Council for Culture will be hosting a meeting of ambassadors to the Holy See from Africa. It's an effort to promote cooperation between the Council and African countries. The program for the event will be divided into several parts and held at a few venues. The beginning of the day will be devoted to a presentation of the Pontifical Council for Culture. During this time, the ambassadors will have an opportunity to ask questions and make proposals for collaboration. The second part of the day will take place at the Temple of Hadrian, where participants will learn about Rome's Chamber of Commerce. The day will end with a visit to Rome's Parco della Musica Auditorium. The event is meant to strengthen further the ties between the embassies and the dicastery and to evolve new ways for cultural cooperation. So far, 23 embassies have confirmed their participation. Looking at news now from around the country, according to Maureen Kondik, a neurobiology researcher at the University of Utah School of Medicine and a senior fellow at the Westchester Institute for Ethics and the Human Person, the ethics of embryonic stem cell research can't be discussed in isolation because the discussion touches on the value of human life and intersects with the issue of abortion. Kondik recently spoke on the ethics of embryonic stem cell research at the Cathedral of the Incarnation and to law students at Vanderbilt University in Nashville. She said that American law is based on the idea that all humans have intrinsic value, but many people in modern society believe humans accrue value gradually as they develop and become more easily recognizable as a human being. And then Kondik said the value of human beings becomes negotiable. She said that to talk more freely about the value of an embryo, the debate has to be turned away from the false notion that we don't know whether an embryo is a human being. She said there are only a few ways of thinking about this, with most of them coming out in favor of the embryo having full human rights. More news now from Cuba. As we mentioned earlier, the Pope will be visiting Cuba, arriving on March 26th. Cubans are eagerly anticipating his arrival, and what better way to celebrate than with song? Rome Reports has more on the two arrangements that have been chosen to be performed for the Pope during his trip. The island of Cuba is getting ready to welcome the Pope in more ways than one. The island recently released at least two official songs that will be sung by locals when the Pope celebrates Mass on the island. One of the songs translates to Welcome Holy Father. It has more of a classical tone and its lyrics include Come with us and share on our table our bread and wine. The other song, which is more upbeat, is titled Pilgrim of Charity, which precisely honors Our Lady of Charity, the patroness of Cuba. That song includes lyrics like, Our Lady, here you have your throne and your home. Cuba is your beloved land that always blesses you. 
The Pope will arrive to the island of Cuba on March 26. Finally in the news, the U.S. bishops are asking Catholics and all people of faith to join them in prayer and penance for government leaders and for the complete protection of religious liberty. The bishops said among the current threats to religious liberty is the HHS mandate that forces employers, including religious ones, to provide coverage of contraception and sterilization in their health plans. In a letter addressed to Catholics in their state, Pennsylvania's bishops called for a day of prayer March 30th saying the observance was planned in response to the assault by the federal government on constitutionally guaranteed religious liberty. The Pro-Life Action League, based in Chicago, and Citizens for Pro-Life Society, based in Michigan, organized a nationwide rally for religious freedom for March 23rd. You can find out more about their efforts at StandUpForReligiousFreedom.com. Also on the USCCB website in the Issues and Action section, the bishops have posted Prayer for Religious Liberty cards that are available to download. The cards are in English and Spanish and feature three different images, Mary as the Immaculate Conception, Our Lady of Guadalupe, and St. Thomas More. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.